All right, my friends, welcome to episode 418 of Prof and Dev Play Persona 3 Reload. <laughs> uh, over there's Anthony. He makes games. He plays games. I am Larry. I am a professor, and I play games. Uh, and we are here to talk about games. But first, how are you, Anthony? I am doing well. Um, kind of everything just kind of blurs together. I'm like, oh, tomorrow's another Monday. <laughs> um <laughs> Is it? Is there an atmospheric river up where you live? Uh, no, because it went down to you. Ah, you know yes, we're in a part. We're in a thing where like our ski resorts up here are like. So we don't have a lot of snow. This isn't great. We how did we switch places? We're getting. I don't know. Rain. You're 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 getting all the rain that's had that we should be having. Um, you're getting it, and it's we would really like it. We would really <laughs> like it back up here, please. It um, is such an amount of rain. It's unbelievable. And then we have the next three days are going to be nuts. Again, I was riding my bike tonight and just fucking gusts of wind were blowing me all over oh, the place. <laughs> okay. It's windy as shit. So. What is going on? Um, yeah, man. Don't know. Yeah, mm. you guys are just uh, down there just getting slammed. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. And up here, we're like, yeah, it's cool. We're clear and 45 degrees. Um do we have anything? I'm just I'm just looking here. Um, well, looks like we'll have some showers to, over the next couple of days, but <laughs> showers is pretty light for us up here. So not completely dry. <laughs> not completely, which fits, but it's not. No big storms, and it's not windy. Yeah, and it's like f- fifty degrees, f- high forties, like forty between forty-seven and fifty-three for the foreseeable future, which is honestly probably about 10 degrees 12 degrees warmer than it normally is um this time of year this whole winter yeah. has been incredibly warm for us oh um, interesting yeah so we flipped flipped a little bit but uh we did i hope this is only a one-off thing which it probably isn't but you know no this is our climate change man yeah i know <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> well, speaking of... Nope, there's no segue there. Uh, this week, there was a Sony State of Play, um, and they had a bunch of stuff going on. And I overall felt like it was pretty interesting. Um, yeah, it was It was interesting. Um, some new stuff, some showing off things that we already knew about. And, um, I want to say a lot of it was stuff that we already knew about. There's only a few yeah. like brand, completely brand new things in here. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's either either stuff that was officially known, or there were leaks a couple days beforehand that were like pretty right on. So yeah, um, um, but yeah, we so can it op- dive in. Go ahead, we yeah, can yeah, dive in. Open, yeah. Speaking of diving in, it opened with Hell Divers Two, which uh, previews have been out recently about the game, and it looks pretty good. Um, it looks, you know, the Hell Divers One. I played that in 2015, and it was like top down kind of thing. And this yep. is not. This is like behind third, the shoulders, third person. person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, third person co op action, and I was like, hmm, "This could be good." Like Hell Divers was good, and people really liked it. Yeah, watch some actual like beyond this trailer. There's previews of people playing and kind of like it was a Q and A with the the devs as well. And there was one point in the multiplayer aspect that was sold on. Like so, they, one the scale of destruction and enemies is is huge. Um, and it feels that way from the older over the shoulder, but one team member had a rocket launcher. Um, Another team member was just walking behind them and running behind them, and they just had rockets on them. So they could help the rocket launcher reload fast. Yeah. And it was just a neat co-op experience there. Like, the other, the person that had the rockets could use other weapons and do stuff, and the rocket, the rocket launcher could manually load things, but it was really slow. But mm-hmm. having another player there being like, no, no, I got you. I'm just following you around, and I'm going to put <laughs> rockets into that tube when you need them um, for rapid-fire rocket launcher. It was just a neat gameplay mechanic and neat way to do the third-person co-op um, that I generally haven't seen in online games much before, where it's like you are directly helping the, your other, your teammates um, based on the kit you're bringing them in that way. Like, you're making their weapons better. <laughs> um yeah, I love the way that it has that aspect. Even Hell Divers One, where it felt like a, a different sort of multiplayer than what's on the market. Yeah. <clears throat> um, 
and uh, it's coming at 40 bucks and you know i think it's i don't know if you would call it the first salvo of of playstation's like games as a service uh push but it certainly has um aspects of that and yeah. gonna, they're going to be adding more stuff to it. the preview said that there are two of the three enemy types from the original game which makes it seem pretty obvious they'll be adding at least that third enemy yeah. type and you know content drops in the future um, the only thing that was making me hesitant in terms of, like, Fantasy Critic, for example, was talking about how light on content it was. Um, but it's also a $40 game, so maybe... And, and you know, stuff will be coming to it eventually. But it looks... I think it looks gorgeous. On yeah. The, the graphics, at least. Yeah, it's maybe light. I, I don't know. It's meant to be pretty highly repeatable and replayable. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the stuff they are talking about with, like, the multiplayer campaign of it... Mm-hmm. is pretty interesting on like i hate using the term live service anymore because <laughs> what do we actually mean by that term um because any game that gets like post-release updates consistently could be considered live service um there was like some article that recently that was like surveyed and there's like 500 500 studios yeah. are working on live uh-huh. service games that you'll dig in and it's like they're defining live service as any game that gets ongoing updates. Which is every game in existence. Pretty much now, because if you don't do it, yeah. we've, I've said it here before, because if you don't do ongoing updates now, people are like, why do I buy your game? Yeah. Like, that's cool, you gave me something up front. Um, but there's this expectation that the game will be continually updated, at least for some time frame. Even games in this vein, if you use that definition, Baldur's Gate 3 would be a live service game. Just because of the of the updates and the hotfixes? Yeah, because it's not even well, hot, even hotfixes. The they're adding new content. It is, yeah, the epilogue. It's not just bug-fixing patches. Um, mm-hmm. they, yeah. are, they are updating and improving the game still. Um, yeah, the epilogues, the the mirror to change your appearances and stuff. Um, right. They, they've had a number of pretty big content chunks in there as well. Um, and if you just define it as... Def- use the term getting consistent updates as your definition of live service, then yeah, I would, I would put it in there. Um, I always think of it as that uh, plus monetization. Yeah. I would probably, it would need something more than just the updates. Monetization. You're right. Yeah. Um, That's, that's my definition at least. And I just, I don't know. I haven't seen a roadmap for Helldivers 2. If they plan, I assume the next stuff will be, paid in some way or there'll be cosmetics i don't know what um yeah, i'd be surprised I, if it's just free for everything ever um, but um, maybe i'd be maybe i'm wrong um yeah i don't know what their uh final plans are there i'm sure there'll be cosmetics um at least yeah um well i'm a uh this is a sony published but it's arrowhead studios uh but it, i don't know if there's been another one where a game that's hitting being published by playstation is hitting ps5 and pc at the same time oh interesting yeah i don't don't know if there's another one another example of that i can't remember like day and date that happening so maybe Uh, yeah i'm looking i'm looking i'm looking forward to it overall um i don't know if i'll pick it up right now i have plenty of other stuff to play but (laughs) um i am also curious in the being arrowhead and helldivers and they did Magicka before that. Um, they're all about the friendly fire. Um, I think they yes. make it pretty clear in the trailer. I'm like, mm, those people are trying not to shoot their friends um, and stay yeah. out of firing lines. That's one of the things I like about it is like that is, um, I don't want to say realistic, but like it just adds to like the uh, most of the previews that the thing that I liked a lot and I'm just like, that could be fun is the, the hilarious fuck ups. <laughs> you know, you yeah. like, Drop, drop a fucking, um, you know, a, a supply drop on your fucking friend's head or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, did you say the Arrowhead did uh, Magicka? I didn't realize I'm pretty that. sure they did Magicka. Oh, they uh, did. You're right. Wow. That was like, sure. that's where I first heard about them was when they did okay. Magicka back in the day. Um, okay. Insane. Oh, man. I played a lot of Magicka. A lot of stupid, stupid mistakes in Magicka. Um, <laughs> with friends. Um, oh, I see here that Helldiver is released on pc in december 7th 2015 published by playstation okay that's that's when it came out for playstation is so yeah they just all right okay 
that much of it's you simil- just be part of their um, publishing agreement with Sony. Is the yeah. thing. Just, like, they be. just put it in there and we're like, no, no. We just want to release it as um, yep. Yep. day and date. Um, which makes sense. It's more players. I think they're cross-play. But it is telling me that it is similar to t- games I played like Team Fortress 2. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Oh, all right. Which uh, my my Rocket League time is quickly approaching the 384 hours of Team Fortress 2, and I have 350 right now in Rocket all right. League. Those are my two most played. But anyway, yeah, Perspective Shift looks good. I'm curious to see what the Metacritic will land. This one, uh, Hellraiser's one was 83. Um, the previews look really positive, so that's yeah. cool. Um, and then they moved on to uh, the horniest game. Yeah, baby. Horny uh, as fuck. <laughs> um, Stellar Blade. Um, mm-hmm. Am I the only one? I, I was watching the trailer and they're going through it. And I'm like, they're really trying to invoke the Nier Automata vibes. Oh, yeah. I, I was like, is this Nier? Nier? Yeah. If you just told me this wasn't Nier, I'd be like, what are you talking about? Like... I it's... has been thinking of it as Bayonetta, and when I saw this trailer, I was like, oh my god, it's fucking near Automata. Yeah. Like, um, cross those two together, and that's what this game is. I, I think um, they didn't show as much gameplay as I'd want overall. It, it was, was a lot of just story, trailer, and man. I was like, what are you... Which is... And the fan for it, where I said, I put a bid in for it yeah. um, at like $5, because I'm like, I'll yeah. probably get it at that if I... But I canceled it. I was like, nah, I don't, I don't feel confident about this game. <laughs> Because I don't, still don't truly feel like I understand what identity it wants to be. Yeah. The way they're marketing it, and I don't know if I'm like, I'm like, can they pull this? Can this company pull off the action RPG like a Bayonetta or Near? I just, I'm not convinced they can. <laughs> um. Yeah, I ultimately, I had that for uh, Hell Divers two and this one. I put low bids because I was like. I think I want them, but if I get outbid, it means it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we we split. You took Helldivers, and I kept this one. But for both of them, I ultimately thought they're being published by PlayStation. I think that's enough for me to think this is going to be good enough. Um. But I I share the same confusion about this game and the tra- I thought the trailer. This was just like a weird story building trailer that was very slow. Like the narrator was very slow yeah yeah um they were just going for a while there and i wasn't yeah a lot of stuff i'm like i don't care about this for a trailer Mm -hmm. um like make me care for it in a game like when i'm playing but uh it's it's hard to to get um invested just watching this trailer (laughs) yeah it's like a lot of pitches for new games are like here's the here's the lore dump it's like i don't care at all show me something like something um narrower that is interesting and i'll care about the lore later i think the creature design is interesting yeah there's a lot of interesting like designs in it um and then yeah horny as hell in the oh my skin, God. skin tight outfits and the fact that you're looking behind the, the 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 female lead constantly you're like yep we know what the we we understand i get what you're going with here um yep they know who their audience is yep um i'm not sure this is a game that I'll play. It makes me want to go back and play Near Automa- Automata. To be I have that's on my list backlog to play because I have the a, a PS4 Yorha copy. Yeah. yeah, I have a Yorha PS4 copy. Um, yeah, someone sold it. Really, I got it for like eight bucks at one point. Yeah, I remember you saying that, and you got it. Um, it was like some you... super sale somewhere, and I was like, sure. Just I think it was Amazon at one point. Just got dropped mm-hmm. to like eight bucks for a lightning deal, and I was like. You know, I want to play this. Eight dollars is cheaper than I've like half the price. I've even seen it on um, on sale on Steam or PSN. Yeah. So I was like, sure. Um, so I need to play it at some point. Because um, I've heard great things about it overall. Oh yeah, um, and I played the demo. I enjoyed the demo back in the day. I I played it for like three or four hours, and the thing that I thought was so interesting is the way that the gameplay shifts as you move forward. It was like a you know, a third person action, then it switched to like a 2D fucking bullet hell fucking yep. Gradius kind of shooter thing. I was like, what the fuck is this game? Yeah, and I hear that the, um, just going along, that's a pretty apt statement for most of the game. Like, what the hell is cool. this game? And that it, <laughs> but it's very cohesive um, yeah. in the end. So, um, just don't get that feeling from Cellar Blade that they're, I just don't, again, don't fully understand their identity yet. Um, 
games. I don't care about their lore. I want to see more of the gameplay um, and yep. what yep. what we're doing there. Yeah, so much of it was not gameplay. It was kind of an interesting yeah. choice. Um, so after that, we had... I, I'm interested in this game, and I don't like Sonic games. Sonic Cross Shadow Generations. It's like a remake of Sonic Generations with no. uh, like a Shadow yeah. additional new stuff. That's like a new stuff. It's a kind of one of those weird things where it's a remake with extra stuff too um more... yeah so go ahead no that's it <laughs> yeah well on fantasy critic it, it uh names it a director's cut because i was trying to pick it up and i was like what the fuck and it said it's just like um uh mario 3d world plus bowser's fury i was like okay oh yeah that makes sense so you remake one game that's exactly the same and then you have an additional story thing kind of like well that's probably uh, where they got the idea from i think that's where they got the idea from it looks <laughs> Let's good be honest. though i mean it, I I believe it. Um, I'm not super interested in Sonic games, but I thought that the gameplay looked pretty interesting on this one, and people are pretty yeah. excited about it. So I'm pretty sure the. Um, I'm hmm? trying to think of the last Sonic game I ever played, and it could be Generations. Oh, that was the you that was the dream Mania. that was the Dreamcast one, right? Was Sonic Generations the first Dreamcast one? I couldn't fucking tell you. I have no idea. I know it was re. I, th- I think it was remade for 360. Yeah, I didn't um, play. I haven't. Um, no, Sonic Generations <coughs> is not that. Um, oh, here it is. Sonic Generations is... Nope, that's, that was totally... That's totally oh, 360, 360... Yeah, 360 3DS, PS3. What was the... So yeah, I never played but I that think one. That, no, but that was, the, that was the remake. I mean, not a remake. I don't know if they called it a remake. But I thought this was a redo of the game that came out earlier than that. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. I think Sonic... I don't think it is. Let's see here. Maybe that is the first one then. Okay, so maybe it came out for fucking Sonic Generations is a 2011 platform game. Yep, it's PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Windows, yes. and 3D. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's not the Dreamcast one. What was the one that I no. played on Dreamcast? Sonic Spinball. <laughs> no, it was a. Th- it was like one of the first like 3D Sonics. Um, it was the first 3D Sonic. Huh. Uh, not 3D Blast. There's 3D Blast. There it is. Oh, it was Sonic Adventure. Sorry. Uh, but it, okay. But it had. I don't know. Watch the trailer. Maybe they always do this. this was uh, Sonic going down a street with a truck behind him? Um, <laughs> Interesting. Um, and that was like a big, a big part of of the game. But it was like, I guess 3D Blast is the first 3D Sonic. Oh, but that's the isometric 3D Sonic. Sonic Adventure is the first like you're over the shoulder behind Sonic running, running around the world. Um correct so yeah i had that on dreamcast at, um when dreamcast came out in the u.s but that's not this game but it's just what they are now um, yeah well it looks interesting i want people who like sonic seem to be interested online i was like sure. okay this is yeah sounds good sonic people do your thing <laughs> that's not it's not me yeah um and then after that Hoyo-verse. we got a hoyoverse thing that i'm like i don't know anything about this one Zenless Zone Zero, um, cool name overall. I it, like alliteration. It is a cool name, yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm so conf- unsure what this game is. Um, feels like it has some jet grind radio in there. Um, I feel like we just had a new Hoyoverse game. We did. Fucking, I'm like, how many games yeah. they support? Um, yeah, exactly. But uh, it it had previously had been a game that had been announced, like. There's no date on when it's coming, but this is the announcement that it's on PS5. Cool. Uh, I don't, need, don't have anything more to say on it. Yeah, not people who like these games are going to like this game. So, yeah, good for them. Um, I'm weirdly excited about the next one. Foam Stars. <laughs> uh, foam not Stars. Spl- man. Not Splatoon. Yes, not Splatoon. Splatoon. We're shooting foam. Yeah. We're uh, covering map. And hey. I assume that's the the, the conceit here. Uh, you can start playing it on the 6th, I believe. I will. I will download it and check it out before next week's podcast. Um, I, I think Splatoon's great. I just don't like the fucking motion controls. <laughs> sure. Very much. Sure. Um, so we'll see how this one goes. My daughter um, loves Splatoon, though. So she's yeah, had a I great see time that. playing Splatoon. Yeah. Uh, um, I hear their campaigns are great, but just the motion controls, I can't do it. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what it is, man. So we'll see what this one's like. I don't think this one has campaigns. This is just multiplayer only. I think so. I think it's just a yeah. focused as a multiplayer um, arena battler, team-based arena battler type thing. 
Um, Smart as hell to put it on PlayStation Plus. Yep. To get an audience at the beginning. So. Yep. Um, yeah, seems good. Then they went into Dave the Diver is getting Godzilla, and I have no clue how that's going to work. But sure. Do you catch Godzilla and cook it up in your sushi restaurant? Is that the goal here? I don't know. I mean, it's cool they got Godzilla, but I am <laughs> so confused on what this is. And maybe it won't, this will be the thing that gets me to play Dave the Diver, um, is just seeing what the hell this is. Um, but it was just funny being stuck in here. I was like, okay, seems, seems yep, cool. That's a thing. Um, but it is Godzilla. I was like, before they showed Godzilla, I heard the music and I was like, this is Godzilla music. Um, <laughs> why is this Godzilla music in this game? Um... But uh, they, you know, it's like their marketing beat, right? We have yeah. we're paid for some marketing, so here's where it's happening. But still, pretty cool. People love that yeah, game. But wow, they do. Godzilla, yeah. Godzilla's having a moment right now. Godzilla they are, one. I want one to arc. see it so bad. I'm uh, looking forward to the Blu-ray so I can see it at home. <laughs> I want to see the minus one, um, minus one minus color version. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that one's out in Japan right now, and I just there's it's unclear if it will come anywhere else outside Japan in like cinema oh really uh, i thought it was coming to the u.s interesting the the color one came to the u.s and is there no i know that yeah i meant the no one. i haven't seen anything that's been confirmed um okay oh maybe maybe now maybe that actually it did just get changed um wait because i no. heard people who had watched this one were looking forward to going out and watching the other one um wait. wait was this in the u.s that they did it yes yeah, I thought so. It was oh, I think I missed it then. Oh, because it, it's out of it's out of theaters this weekend, I think. It was one week. Yeah, it was January. It ended this past weekend. It ended Thursday. Yeah. It yeah. was twenty. I looked the week before, and this hadn't been announced. Um, <laughs> I was looking. Oh shit, that sucks. Because I really wanted to see it. I'm like, oh, I really want to see this. People have been talking about Godzilla minus one being like really good. Um, yeah, and I'm like okay, I'm here for an actual good Godzilla movie. And then I saw that they were going to do it in a... That was also filmed with the thought of it being in black and white to match the original Godzilla. And I was like, mm-hmm. that seems cool. So, I guess I will be waiting until... Uh, uh, the Blu-ray comes out, or it's on streaming. Yeah, I should have let you know, I didn't realize. Um... Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, it was just the last week of Godzilla... Oh, that's why it was confusing. Godzilla minus one completely leaves theaters February first, and the last yeah. week of that they did the minus color version. Yeah, oh, that sucks. Okay, Boo. I assume. Don't you think that the the Blu-ray will have both? Yeah, or at least they'll do a version of both. I mean, I have yeah. the mm. Fury Road Black and Chrome edition. Yeah, me too. So which has yeah. both. Um, yep. And it's a Blu-ray, so they can have both easily. Have both yeah. on there. So exactly. Uh, that's my hope, and I'll get to see this thing. Um, yeah, that's the one I thought of first is ha- that, yeah. having that game. But you're right. Guzzle's having a moment right now. Definitely. Yeah, some quality stuff coming out for it. Being people go like, oh, yeah, this is this is a property that people like um, if it's done well. So, yep. um, But then we had uh, V Rising coming to PS5. That's cool. I haven't touched that game in a couple of years. but I, I thought you had played that through on PC. Not through, it was in early access. Which I think yeah. this is probably... Is it still early access? It, it is. In... So this is probably saying... I don't know what they... I think they just said this year that it's coming to Steam. Which... Uh, uh, not Steam. Coming to PlayStation. Yeah. Which PlayStation doesn't do early access. So they're leaving early access then. Yeah, sometime this year V Rising is leaving early access. And when it does it, it launches on playstation as well um i don't remember this being a survival game is it it is survival crafting game just a different kind of perspective um okay it was neat it's a really neat game Uh, yeah i look forward to it when it when it leaves i'll probably fire it up again and play it um Mm -hmm. had really good combat very interesting that way the vampire thing was really cool um mainly because yeah you sun hurts you uh, so you're jumping between shadows when daylight's out, and you try to do things at night. <laughs> and that's pretty cool. If daylight cycle, uh, yeah, goes away, um, night goes away. Well, you're trying to figure out how you do this, um, right? Yeah, and it had bosses and things like that, um, like clear progression to the game. Um, 
story-wise um, and mechanically. So yeah, really neat. I enjoyed it. Uh, I don't think I'll pick it up on PS5 because I have no, it on PC. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Um, and here's the next game. Next two games I'm never going to play, and one of which came out the day of the direct. Um, Silent Hill: The Short Message, and then Silent Hill 2 uh, remake. I think it's a right. remake. Yeah, it is. Um, have you looked at anything on these? I just watched the trailers. And I was like, nope, not doing it. I yeah, I saw the trailers. I was like, those are not for me. And then I've seen the reviews of the short message, and it seems to not be for a lot of people. <laughs> okay, people did not like it very much. Although it, people were saying that it means there's maybe more Silent Hill stuff coming. So if you're a Silent Hill fan, then that's good. But um. um... I wasn't a huge fan of the Silent Hill 2 trailer itself, though. No, it looked... Um, it looked rough. It did, yeah. Kind of I feel, thought... It's kind of feel like how Konami has um, yep. been ha- been treating that franchise for a long time. So, Well, it's Blooper Team who's doing it. Um, it. Yeah, it just doesn't... You know, I think I heard it on a podcast, but it made me think about it when they said it, comparing it to Resident Evil 4 Remake, like sure. the, how those, they're remakes of similar kind of genre games and they look night and day differently. So, Yeah, they do. That's the thing about it. I'm like, no, I kind of feel like um, there's, there's a different quality bar going on there on what they're trying yeah, to do. Yeah. Um, so, we'll see, um, but it's definitely one where I'm like, nah, I'm gonna hold off on, well, I'll never play it anyway. But if it came like no. Fantasy Critic, I wouldn't pick it up. I'd be like, no. no. Yeah. Um, but I was excited about the next game. It? Goddamn. So it's Judas. It's Ken Levine's new game. Yep. It looks just like Bioshock. Pretty much. <laughs> me. Kind Holy of. Shit. I mean, it definitely mechanically does. It's like That's dual I mean, wielding, yeah. Yeah. Um, immersive sim. Like, it's not moving away from that. Clearly, the story is very different than Bioshock. Um, yeah. But I'm like, no, gameplay. I'm like, I know this gameplay. Cool. Uh, elemental reactions to different powers you get. Um, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Um, I like that gameplay, and I like that the, the immersive sim genre. So if he's the only one pushing it forward, um, now that the Deus Ex that was in uh, yeah, development was canned, cool. there's not a lot yeah. of immersive sims out there well so it made me want to go back i mean it made me think back very fondly to my time with infinite which is the only bioshock i've played um I'm like i have one and two maybe i should go check those out this year you should um, i would think one definitely playing one it's gonna be interesting going back from infinite because there's some speed of use because um bioshock one you can't dual wield like, you have one mm. thing out at a time. You either you're using mm-hmm. your powers or you're using a gun. So it's a lot harder to switch. I think that's how... It, or maybe you can dual wield a little bit. But it's more limited and it's not as fluid as, like, two yeah. and infinite were. Um, so it makes combat a little slower overall, but still very much the the same systems that you're working with. And, I mean, you need to play it so you can um, fight your big daddies since they're such an iconic part of gaming at this point well in bioshock 2 is that the one that has minerva's den mm, i think so I, I, people continue to talk about that as like one of the best dlcs um and i think it was bioshock 2 that had minerva's den or maybe it's that's Miner- mass it, effect 2. no it's no, minerva's den two. it's bioshock 2. bioshock yeah, 2. okay um i was like it's a fucking two <laughs> yeah um it is very yeah minerva's den was very was very good um Honestly, I it's, don't know if Bioshock 1 didn't get DLC, I don't think. You know what's crazy about watching... I'm watching the Judas trailer again. And I'm tr- in my head comparing it to Avowed now. And how good this looks <laughs> compared to Avowed. That sucks. Um, I'm sure Avowed's going to be fine. But like that whole like the fucking Skyrim-y kind of like that perspective with the, the hand. You know, like the same thing with Bioshock. Yeah. Um, I don't like very much, but and I didn't didn't stand out as me liking it in the Avowed trailer. But here, it looks fucking rad. Why the hell does it look rad here? I mean, it's different feeling, different a speed of things. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. There's just a 
I will say, like, it just when they're showing the gameplay, yes, it looks Bioshocky and Bioshock Infinity, but there's a visceralness to that um, mechanical loop that honestly, Skyrim and everything feels a little floaty when doing that combat. Mm-hmm. Everything here, I'm watching the trailer. Just it feels like it has weight to it as you're doing things. The gun, it it's not a mechanics thing. I think this is really just an execution point of being like, yeah, shooting a gun using a power, it has big reactions. Um, a lot of weight you can visually kind of feel the heft between the actions that you're doing, and it just generally um, isn't something you can engineer completely like yeah it's a lot of plan i'm and knowing ken levine and the stuff he's done in the past um all the good and bad of people that have worked with him uh that's what he's very good at digging down into and making sure just like get us a test level we're just gonna play it over and over and tune and tune until we get combat to feel exactly how we want it to feel now let's it go comes build. A- now let's build the game <laughs> um it comes across in this trailer. I, I would love to see that in Avowed side by side, but man, it really does come across as like fucking polished. Um, yeah. And I mean, man. the game's who knows when the game's coming out. Um, yeah. It's not this year. I don't think. No, I don't think it's this year. I think at 20, my assumption is 2025 at earliest. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm very curious what this game is going to be in the end. Um, the, between the first trailer and this, and then his talk on narrative Legos, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I do feel like there's going to be an element high high replayability here. It's going to be trying to make a pretty strong narrative game that has you can replay a lot and get a lot of different variations out yeah. out of it. Um, and we'll see if it's successful. I have no clue. Um, but yeah, it's in development for PS5. Was the trailer? It's like cool. It's coming to PS5. That doesn't surprise me. No. At all. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, and then we get... Uh, so that looked cool. That was probably my like game that I'm like, I want to play this, which doesn't surprise me. Um, yeah, it was the I don't one think it, I whole... don't think it's the weirdest trailer from this show. No, and it was the one trailer from here of a game that I wasn't excited about that got me... I'm the most interested in playing this game now as yeah. opposed to anything else on the list. Uh we get a VR section next, uh, Metro Awakening, which looks a lot like Half-Life. They mention it in this article we're looking at. It is totally reminding me of Half-Life, Alex. I'm mm-hmm. like, yep, okay. Someone's Metro Awakening team, they're trying to really make a, a super high-quality VR experience. Um, it looks I good, and I feel bad yeah. for the ones that came after it in the fucking reel here. Yeah, Legendary um, Tales, which did not ooh, look nearly as good as that. God, they should have real led rough. with Legendary Tales and then gone to Metro. <laughs> they should have switched them. Absolutely, Jesus Christ, it did them absolutely no favors. Yeah. Uh, so not a lot to say there. And then we got Dragon's Dogma Two, um, which was just a full on gameplay trailer, and I am I'm down to play this game. I'm gonna have fun with this. I am so interested interested in this game simply from a fantasy critic perspective because you have it and the 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 comments about fast travel yep. have me wondering if the quality of life is going to knock the score down a bit. Maybe. Um, I'll be curious people, what they do with that. I know there's like yeah. no fast travel. I'm like, "All right." Which is fine. He's like, "We leave fast travel for boring games." Like, "Wow, shit. All right." I mean, that's a shot's fired. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like show and it's like all right prove to me your game's not boring then um which it might not be maybe that's like the point yeah. is you don't fast right. travel and there's like cool things that happened when you travel around um and you want to do it <laughs> um yeah uh this show just it was just gameplay it was like yep switching um classes jobs i don't even know what they're called in the game um and you can have multiple based on the weapons you're using so I saw someone describe it as a uh, this game as a monster hunter like is that... kind of I... I mean the enemy some of the enemies are really big um mm-hmm. and they take a lot of work to bring down um and you can climb yeah. on them as shown in like every trailer that's like right. the big thing you can climb and stab and do all sorts of stuff um so um and they showed a dragon and they showed you getting on the dragon and stabbing the dragon um yep well so, 10 out of 10 already then yeah <laughs> um I'm looking forward to it 
Um, that's March 22nd. I think that's the last, yeah. the last game that I currently am like, yes, I'm going to get this. And then mm-hmm. I can figure out what happens after that. Um, just a lot of big games over the next two months. Um, and I'm sure they're going to take a bunch of my time. I'm uh, so interested in how many good fucking games there are in the, the first three months of this year. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, they, they would have all been coming out last year, probably. Um, They're like, let's get out of 2023. <laughs> pretty much. Give us some extra time. Let's get this polished. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we had Rise of the Ronin gameplay, um, Did which you... looked Assassin's creed Um, but is also, I'm like, I did not re- realize it was Team Ninja. Or like, I knew it, but I had kind of forgotten. And then I saw it, and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, it's the Neo team. Like, I just immediately right. looked at it, and I was like, oh, it's Neo meets Assassin's Creed in Japan. Okay. Uh, they're going to get a, J- a, J- a Japanese Assassin's Creed before Assassin's Creed gets there. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. They're going to beat them by six months, if yeah. the rumors are true. Yeah. Um, I thought that the trailer looked a little rough, not in the way that... um. Silent Hill did, but it's maybe yeah, maybe it's just Neo ish. It looks Neo. The art style looks yeah. Neo to me. Yeah. Like that's what um it has a I wouldn't call it like roughness to it, but it's definitely a, uh an art direction it, it, choice of like how they're modeling <coughs> things and texturing things and like it immediately it like, read Neo to me. <laughs> yeah, it just comes across as faded to me. And I'm just like see that what is that? But I love the fact that you can like throw a fucking hook onto some sort of fucking vantage and then jump in the air and fucking glide through the air, man. Yep. Um, it looks, I love that traversal. That traversal sounds like it's going to be fun. Yeah. And I mean, that um, whole trailer was much, was really focused on the traversal and this is really team ninjas first open world game. Cause mm-hmm. even Neo games weren't open world. They were level based. Um, yeah, totally. big, yeah. big levels, but they weren't open. Um, yeah, I don't know. And the time period that they're setting this is pretty interesting um, because it is actually set in a real historical point um, in area Japan, like, like uh, the, yeah, the Bakumatsu. Um, It was like when Japan was ending its uh, isolationism. Um, So that's why you're in Yokohama, which is like where the Western, um, um, foreigners like really started building in Yokohama. Um, so if you even like modern day go to Japan and Yokohama, you will see a little bit more Western influence in that city. Interesting. So this will dig into that, which is interesting. I am I am all like Assassin's Creed when it does it well. I always love their the historical aspect that they play oh, with. Oh, absolutely. That's um, my favorite so thing that about that it. makes me excited for this because it could be a really mm-hmm. fun fun thing to do, and it's a Japanese dev doing it, so that could be pretty interesting. Um, them digging on into the historical roots of this time period and what's going on there. Um, I'm really interested in this, um, in what you're talking about, and I'm watching the, the trailer now with the, you know, swords and then firearms, and thinking about Blue Eye Samurai in that time period. Yep. Um, and how this. Well, it's Blue Eye Samurai. Did you finish it? I did. Yeah. Okay, I mean, that's the start of the Bakamatsu. Yeah, right. For the... That's... 100, 200 years of isolationism um, started. Because right. the end of um, Blue White Samurai is actually a historical event. Um, that really happened. They, of course, um, exaggerate aspects of it and who was involved and what happened. Oh, yeah, but sure. yeah. But uh, that was a real thing that happened and they're like, yeah, no more foreigners in our country. Yep. Bye. Get them out of here. <laughs> we do but not like that. Sneak in some of those firearms. Yeah, we're going to get to of course. Of course. Yep, 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 yep. Um yeah, so yeah. this I mean it looks fun. Assassin's Creed's awesome. Fucking Ghost of Tsushima was rad. This looks like a good mix of both of them plus some Breath of the Wild fucking gliding. Yeah. I just the art style is uh intriguing to me, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Yeah. It, um... it looks good. It looks good though. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, the critics uh, lined on that one. Uh, we had uh, Until Dawn that's coming to yeah. PS5. We all doesn't surprise this. me. There's a movie uh, being yeah. made. Of course, they're yeah. going to keep putting stuff on there. Um, exactly. But then we got to the meat of probably like the longest trailer <laughs> that just kept on going and just kept on getting weirder Weird. and weirder. Oh my god, dude! 
I what is Kojima smoking? Like it's fucking I, wild. Go ahead. He's been wild for his career, but it just seems like I'm like felt like since Metal Gear Solid Two, he just went is just on a trajectory of being weirder and weirder. Um. Well, it started with like the doctor, or whatever, with, like a fucking mask over her face. That's like two, hands. hands. Yes, hands. And I was like, little hands on her shoulder. Fucking weird. <laughs> and then we get Troy Baker the clown with a fucking guitar. Yep. Um. <laughs> it's you get it you get the me... the puppet dummy oh, right. thing that hangs, but actually animates, not at full FPS. It's actually like, like drop. FPS yeah, FPS dropping FPS. frames. Like, I don't understand. You have the baby's mouth opening and a ship coming out of it, because why not? Um, I don't... I don't know, dude. Like, I'm not playing this game. I'm not. But I'm going to probably watch an entire playthrough of this game, like I did original Death Stranding, and just kind of hold my head the entire time, being like, I don't... Why? Why this? Um, it, I'm so fucking curious to fucking play Death Stranding 1. Because, <laughs> like... Wow, what is this? This is wild. Now I'm finally starting to understand people and Kojima. Like, you get something that you've never seen anywhere else. This is so weird. It's such a weird mix of everything. Um, I mean, yeah, the dude is just has been successful enough that he does get to just make whatever he wants to make. But he's also been very clear himself. Before making games, he wanted to make movies. And now yeah, his entire yeah, career clearly. has bridged into like how can i merge games and movies basically um which leads to the next game he was talking about which is they're not even giving a title they're just like hey when death stranding 2 is done he's gonna work on an action espionage game aka a new metal Metal gear Gear. solid type thing like an all a spiritual successor to metal gear since konami owns that um which is cool, but he's just like, this will be the culmination of my entire work. And I'm like, what do you mean by that? What could that even be at this yeah. point? Yeah. Um, although they zoom out from like a, at the end of this thing to like, he's on the Sony Pictures set. So I feel like this is going to be like a merging of movies and games and the whole thing that Sony's trying to pull with him here. Um, it's going to be ridiculous. That's what it's going to be. Um I have learned that I do not want to play his games anymore, but I do want to watch them. <laughs> That's okay. There's enough people who want to. I I I can't. I mean, I played Metal Gear. I played um. Oh, before five, it was what the hell was that little thing? Ground Zeroes. I played Ground oh, Zeroes, sure. and I played some of five, and I was like, the gameplay is excellent, and then the story hit, and I was like, uh, I don't understand <laughs> any of this shit. What the nope. fuck? Nope. <laughs> Flaming skull people running these horses. I'm okay. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, but now I'm just wondering. God, this this trailer is just so fucking interesting. <laughs> I don't even understand. I just feel like it's a sure. Why not? What if, what if? Uh, the main female character she has like extra hands by her shoulders. Oh my god, so like, weird. And someone's like, yes, let me concept that. <laughs> and this is what we get. I don't know. Uh, I don't know at all. Um, but that's what it ended with, which was crazy. Um, and then the little snippet that they're going to be back, what, the 6th? Um, yeah, for um, uh, Tuesday, Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, rebirth. it's just all Final Fantasy VII Rebirth for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, Do you which is great. like you need to see more of that? No. But I'm sure this is part of the co-marketing deal. Um, oh yeah, it's a huge marketing blitz for them. Yeah, yeah, um, and it gets a lot of eyes on Rebirth for the people that don't know Rebirth is actually happening for some reason. Um, honestly, it's probably going to do a lot to assuage people that they don't need to buy or play a remake to play Rebirth. I don't know if that will hold, but. Yeah. I know that I know that they're trying to do that, being like, hey, you don't have to play this other 50, 60 hour game. Um to play But I want to. But I yeah. want to. Hmm. Uh supposedly uh, there's like a 20, 30 minute like full cutscene recap of remake really? in in Rebirth. Yeah, you can start and say like oh, tell me what's Rebirth. happened. Okay. Tell me what's happened in remake. Cool. <laughs> so uh, that I can be up to speed. <laughs> yeah. 
Like, uh, I mean, I, I'm sure if they did that for Infinite Wealth, it would have been like a seven hour movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, um, the melodrama of fucking Yakuza is <laughs> it sticks with you, man. <laughs> It's really uh, fucking good. It's weird that I'm saying that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't feel like, uh, this is I don't a good transition. What have you been playing? <laughs> well, Yakuza, man, Yakuza <laughs> is fucking really interesting. This Kiri, this Kazuma Kiryu guy. I don't know how they did it, because um, it's only been what my Steam clock says. I've probably only played like five hours, um, which is about the same that I played Persona Three um, Reload. But he is like. He he is just he has like his va- I know who Cosmic Kiryu is after five hours. He's like a very particular person has very particular values, and it's different than other main characters that I've seen. He's just like very um, like rigid to his like defense of his values and what he thinks is important. And like it's like it starts off I don't know like it's the it's called Yakuza. Yeah, and within the three hours he's kicked out of the Yakuza. <laughs> like he's not in the yakuza anymore and it's like wait well, that was a fucking swerve um so i've been playing that and it's fantastic it runs still runs amazing on the on the oled uh steam deck um i my xbox is my jrpg box because i downloaded every single yakuza game that is on game pass and then i downloaded um persona 3 reload when okay. it launched um and i played um friday was an off day for me so i did some work and i had a bunch of free time so i played five hours on friday but i haven't played since um and i'll just talk a little bit about reload because i'm gonna toss it to you i think you played it more and you have more to say but yes but i'm really interested um i'm not like hooked on it like i'm gonna keep playing i'll keep playing it and keep playing yakuza depending on what what mood i'm in um but i'm interested in how quickly it's hooked me in a way that five didn't um, five's interesting and I enjoyed playing the, you know, the 10 hours or whatever that I did, but three just makes more sense. And I don't know what that means. Like, I don't know. I what don't I know. Mean by that. Um, but three is like, I feel like I'm in with this group. Like this is the group. I'm sure it's going to expand later, but like we're, I think we're just so tightly in with these characters that I just, I'm better able to track what's going on. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I, I like Tartarus better than I like the different dungeons in Persona 5. I feel like it's the same, I, from what I under, assume at least, is that you just keep going up the tower. Um, I don't think yes. there are other dungeons. Um, and I kind of like that, even though I th- I feel like that's going to get repetitive. Um, I mean, that's the I complaints know. from the original were, and honestly, that, that yeah, the dungeons in 3 and 4 are tile stamped procedural mm-hmm. random dungeons yeah. um right they're That's not it feels like. they're not yeah. they're not crafted um i can talk about when you finish i can talk about reload and what it does with yeah. tartars um okay well i'm thankful that after a while i've realized there was a it wasn't like an auto battle but it was like a kind of end this battle quickly when you're just fighting the same kind of yep. shadows over and over again um that helped um but i just i think i like the characters more i think that's probably what it is I found, I think his name is Ryuji in, in Persona 5. Yeah. I just find him annoying. And I haven't gotten past the point where he's annoying to me. Um, and I'm sure he gets better. But oh, in very, this character, yeah. yeah. In this game so far, that I just really like the characters. I like the story. I feel like he gets into it quickly. Um, I know what we're doing. We're waking people who are waking up to the dark hour and are able to, you know, stay awake and not become coffins during the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's just, it's, Yeah. I, I really like it so far, and I'm surprised. Uh, maybe uh, not. I'm maybe not surprised, but like this is like JRPG year for me. Apparently, it's only February. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I'll play more of it. I really liked it, and that's pretty much where I'm at with it. Five hours in, level nine, I think. Okay. Um, so yeah. All right. What about you? All right. So uh, I'll start on earlier in the week. I finished Thirteen Sentinels. Yay. Um, that was cool. Um. Big visual novel, little game. That's what I'm going to say on that one. Um, and I'll say objectively, it is well crafted story and visual novel. I can, it will just not be for everybody. I think a lot of people will be like, "What the hell is this crap?" Um, if you like, and it's very much a great execution on an homage to tons of sci-fi influences, and they're not hiding it. Like 
throughout the game they reference War of the Worlds, uh, all Jules. Um, pick your mecha anime um, or show, shows. Um, pick all sorts of like just old Japanese culture and sci-fi. Um, um, and then a lot of like of the famous Western kind of sci-fi cinema like Terminator, Terminator stuff is in there. Um, stuff dealing with cloning and interstellar travel and virtual reality and AIs. Um, what is human? What is not kind of stuff like invasion of body snatcher stuff, like all these tropes mixed all together, but still having a cohesive story and a vi- they stick to landing so well. I was, Oh wow. I just enjoy it. Like that was what man, I was like, Oh, I got the end. I'm like, I care about these characters and I love how this ends. Um, and I don't feel like they, they drop the ball on really finishing out the characters and being like, yeah, okay, I get it. Even with all this weird mix of everything. Um, but it is your overall playtime with, um, just the ballpark 30 hours, I think. Wow. Okay. Not bad. Um, I think, um, I want to check. It was, I checked on how long to beat at one point and I was roughly in the same ballpark as that. Yeah, 30 hours. It was like 35, yeah. 30 to 35, mm-hmm. somewhere in there. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. It was cool to finish. I'm glad I finished it. Um, there's some lines that are very tongue-in-cheek at times, and they're clearly the translators know that they're doing this, and it's great. Um, I <laughs> laughed at them, and they're like, yeah, you're supposed to laugh at this. I th- I'm pretty sure. Um, so that was that was fun. I think I finished that on Wednesday. And then just in time, just in time to dive into Persona Three. Um, and now going into Persona Three, I think I've said this on the before. I don't really didn't know what the story of the game was. I know that they mm-hmm. shoot themselves in the head with psychic guns to do magic, <laughs> and I know that there's a single dungeon. It's not multiple. It's just a single dungeon. You go up. Um, I'm like, that's basically all I know about the premise of this game. Um, and I will tell you, you're right. They really just drop you right in immediately. Yeah, like it's that. I you get to the that. house, and then it's just like, oh, hey, um, I, uh, you're this team. It it's interesting because the difference between Persona Five is no one knows what's going on in Persona Five, and you're piecing it together. Like yeah. all the characters are piecing it together. You're introduced to characters that already know what's going on, yeah. and they are catching like you up with what's going on. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. um. So um, that's fun. I think I'm 13 hours in. I would have to check my playtime. 13 or 14. Wow. wow. I've been playing a lot. I've been staying up real late. Um, wow. I'm level 20 on my main character. And okay. I'm in my... So uh, the dungeon is actually broken up into sections. Um, mm-hmm. And you there, there's things called borders. Um, and yep. you will get to a point where you hit a border and you cannot continue past it until a certain day of the year has passed in game. Right. So I'm on my third block. I'm working to my third border tonight. Um, what month are you in? June. Okay. I'm on, I'm on the third full moon. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, cause the moon cycles really matter in this game actually. Yeah. Um, great. So yeah, I'm in the I'm on the third third chunk going on there. I have just I'm trying to think. I have party members now. I have one, two. I have, including myself, I have five party members now, and I can go in with. And the full party size is four now, so right. I get four characters, and yeah, so I've progressed pretty pretty far. Um, overall, it gets right into it. Um, I will say, like, even there's parts of it where I'm like, oh, the writing wise is still very 2006 ish in mm-hmm. a lot of ways. Like, they it, this is an update, but they clearly weren't like, we're gonna destroy the soul of this game. We're not gonna remake. Right. It's like I'm like, no, okay, because some things just happen so fast where I'm like, oh, this is just like a really quick line and we're done. I'm like, huh, all right, we're just gonna move on from that. All right, we're just moving on. Um, like shooting yourselves with with guns like i'm for i'm like 
they call them evokers and they talk about them. Yeah. Every once in a while, there's a little bit. I'm like, why? Why does it have to be this? <laughs> um, hasn't come up. <laughs> yeah. And no one, it, and no it one really questions like, it. <laughs> it. That's the thing is like, it starts off with, um, I don't remember her name. Ta- 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 Hanabe or ta- I don't remember the, yeah, I know. The, yeah. The f- women the, in your fucking yeah. party. Um, whose name I, is escaping me. Um, and it starts off, the whole thing starts off with her, like trying to shoot herself in the head. And I was like, wow. Okay. <laughs> this is how yeah. this whole game's starting. huh? Yep. Um, but then they do that to summon their persona, and no one says a thing about how weird that is. No, so. no one at all is talking about it. Although I did yeah. go read, there's like a point where then you can it unlocks in the a dictionary in the system menu, and it talks about like you can go get details of high level terms, and evoker is one of them, which is the gun, and it talks mm-hmm. about like used to um, help summon your persona. But isn't it specifically says also not required for summoning a persona. So I'm wondering if that's a later thing. Um, oh, interesting. It is not it a yeah, specifically. It, yeah, it does specifically say that it's, you're not required to use this to summon them. Um, so maybe if you're more in tune with yourself and understanding, you'll you could just do it without it. Um, so I'm curious about that. I right now it still just sits under the thing of oh, why is this here? Because it's provocative imagery. That's it. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. But I don't want to say that that's going to be what it is as time goes on. Cause here's the thing I've also found with the game story wise. It is a little, I'm not saying it's slow, but it's so burny and that I'm starting to see the fractures just a little bit that every character that I'm interacting with has some tragedy in their life. Yeah. It, but it's not explicit yet, and I don't know the care. And that's one of the things with the Persona games—you don't know the characters well enough yet. And that's part of the game is spending time with all the different characters and them opening up to you. Um, but there has been a couple points where some of the characters have talked about, like, "Oh yeah, my parents have passed away," or "This person, I've had like a death or a tragedy here and there." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." I feel like there, there's something that's going to build around all of that. Um, but I'm not there yet. Um, and I don't know I when wonder, that will actually happen. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if like because I've heard that in podcasts as well. People talking about how you know playing it now as opposed to playing it before, they've experienced more tragedy in their own lives and they connect more to this game because of that. And I'm wondering if the the evoker, if later there's like a major character who commits suicide or something, um. Cause, you know, because it starts off with a, a warning about that when you load the yeah. game up, but I assume that's because of the evoker. But maybe there's also more to it, and then that changes the way. That maybe, you yeah, I don't interact. Know. Yeah, I don't the know. Game, the game I could just, do a thing. It could also just be, um, my my personal interpretation right now is like, why does it have to be a a gun, and why do they have to shoot themselves to do it? Um, is showing. They talk about in the the two times now I've seen it done in the game where a person does it for the first time and they do a nice cut scene for the whole thing going on is it's in protecting someone or sacrifice like kind of treating it as your sacrifice choosing to sacrifice yourself to protect someone else um yeah and it's just the visual representation of you making the choice that inflicting not pain but that symbol of that going on um, reflect your the the character's inherent choice um, to protect someone else um, for harm with harming themselves. Um, I could be way off there, but the two times it's been done, that's been the main re- like the the underlying reason why they're doing it. Um, yeah, and initiating it for the first time. Now, during combat, they just do it all the time. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. At that right. point. But with no but, big deal. And multiple times per round. Yes. Um if you want to. Jeez. Yeah. Um but I am really enjoying it. Um it's like I said, a bit simpler. It's still a two that like you can tell it's based on a two thousand six, two thousand five, two thousand six RPG with improvements bringing stuff up, but it is it still has an edge to it that's not as sheenly polished as like Persona mm-hmm. five. Um, yeah. Which is great. I think that's kind of important for a game from that time. I don't want that erased. 
completely. Um, the music is incredible. The Holy. music is so fucking good. <laughs> And, and I knew the music good. was good originally, but holy cow. Yeah. Well, there's a bunch of new stuff, too. It's a different... Yeah. There's a new singer. Um, it's just the same thing with, um, like, the additions of the new social links, where you can actually, like, have social links with the guys yep. in the game now, where you just be the girls. Um, so much has been added that just either is on par with what there was before or is better, you know? Yeah. And music, I think, is one of those things. I watched um, someone who... Uh... YouTube reacted to the like the two new songs in Reload yeah. completely, uh-huh. and they love Persona Three music, and they had not heard the Reload music, and they got done uh-huh. with it. And they're like, "If you told me that those were Persona Three songs, I would have believed you." Like yeah. they don't. He's like, he's like, they do not feel out of place for the music that came before. They just feel like a natural part of the game um, that's always been there. Uh, it does help that the the rapper in them is the same rapper from 2006, uh, Lotus Juice. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, it was the female singer. That's a new female singer. Um, right. I was wondering if the if the rap thing was new or if it was from no. Then. That's from the that's original. It. Yeah, I've heard okay. some of the original music um, before, and I knew it had like a rap a rap rockish kind of thing going on. Um, kind of. It's not. It, it rock, but it's not. It, I don't know. Listen to the songs. You just listen to the bass lines. They're just insane. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, but overall, I'm I'm having a blast with the game. Um, we're gonna finish recording, wow. and I'm gonna continue working my way through <laughs> through uh, I Tartarus. Believe, I can't believe how stupid's the wrong word. I can't believe how naive I was to think that. I would possibly have more hours in this game than you by the time we got this podcast. No, I, no I felt way. so good that I had five hours in it. Oh my god! Um, ah, one, I've one got a bunch of trophies already. It's been great. God, um, that's awesome. I have a couple of achievements because I'm playing on the Xbox. There you um, go. One thing I forgot to mention about playing a different game: um, Celeste sixty four, dude. Oh yeah, Celeste I saw 64 that. Four fucking dropped, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> they basically spent a week, a little more, making a. Uh, a six-year anniversary um, homage to their own game, where they came out with a sixty uh, Mario sixty-four tinged Mario Sunshine tinged fucking three D Celeste, and it's hard. <laughs> um, the, I don't remember there being a mechanic where you can hold the right trigger and then climb up the face of things. That might be an addition for this one, or I may be misremembering because it's been so long since I played Celeste. Um, but I stumbled into a secret level um, where you hit a cassette and you go to a secret level, which is kind of like the B-sides from Celeste where they're like way fucking hard. Sure. And I just beat my head against the wall on this fucking B-side. Did not beat it. Um, that's w- basically where I spent most of my time trying to traverse through 3D space to get those little pellets that refill your dash meter. Kept fucking me up. <laughs> it's a... Uh... Playing Celeste in 3D is fucking hard. <laughs> so <laughs> that's been my experience so far. Apparently, you can get it to run on the Steam Deck, which sounds uh, quite appealing to me. Sure. Uh, so I, I will try that. Uh, it sounds really hard. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Did you? I don't think you played Celeste. No. No. Uh, yeah. So I figured it wasn't completely my type of thing. Um, I probably no. get frustrated. Um, oh my god, I love the fuck man. I know. Um, it reminds me actually of um. Uh, Lost Crown. The, some of the platforming sections are actually no, they, they are duh. So in Celeste, where you um, get the strawberry, and then you don't get the strawberry till you come back and land. And okay. There are lots of places where like you don't land for like a solid thirty seconds to get the thing, and then have to come all the way back. They have that in Lost Crown. So there are uh, sections of Lost Crown that are like the platforming sections that are tough as nails and exactly like Celeste, and it's just fucking beautiful i love it so much but in 3d space sort of like sunshine (laughs) sometimes it doesn't always land for me but it was a cool surprise man i can't believe they're not selling it Uh, maybe because they're using some of the sound fonts from mario 64 (laughs) mario sunshine um i don't know yeah that works but yeah i don't know what that is maybe this is them just experimenting and they're like Mm -hmm. how are people feeling about this overall we like it how are who knows yeah. what they're doing next? Um, 
Yeah. Well, no, we no, do. They're when doing Earthblade. Earth yeah, Blade, maybe right? that maybe yeah. this was something they were just dabbling with before they started with Earthblade. They're like, nah, we don't want to do that. Do the it's like the game the, jam. The, the 3D platformer thing. We'll just be like, nah. But we have this cool thing. Let's just fit, let's tie a bow on it and put it out. Um, but since it's free, no one's expecting like a fully polished Celeste experience. Um, right. Um, just a fine way to do it. But yeah, um, well, that's cool. Yeah, pretty cool. So that's that's about it. The little things with my daughter and that's uh, a couple of different small games, and it's been fun. She's been having fun with um, Tears of the Kingdom. She watching her play Tears of the Kingdom right now, where we are in Terrytown. We are on the task uh, list to build our own house, and she just needs to find ten Sundalions. And every two Sunday Lions, she gets distracted by something else. And sure. just watching her do what we all do in that game, where it's just like, ooh, what's that? Um, is really kind of cool to see. What's that shiny thing over yeah, What's that shiny thing, yep. And you're like, oh, child. Um, she, she spent 30 minutes. She stumbled across a bunch of materials in the sky, and she spent 30 minutes building this crazy-ass airship that... Oh, that's funny. Know, 20 seconds later fucking fell out of the sky all the way down to the surface um and she just glided away it was really fucking cool. like all right that's cool well awesome yep well that's that's everything yeah <sighs> good week got, good gaming yeah week. it was a good week um got a ff7 rebirth thing this week and um maybe that nintendo thing that might happen wednesday. eventually wednesday happen. morning it's happening wednesday morning Okay, <laughs> call it. I'm just gonna call him a shot. Call him a shot. Oh, uh, we also did the demo for uh, Mario versus Donkey Kong. Okay, uh, my daughter did it and she loved it. Fucking loved okay. it. She did it all by herself. It was great. Solving those little puzzles. Nice, Thank nice. You. Really good time. So lots of good stuff happening. All right. Well, we'll be back next week, folks. This was episode four eighteen of Prof and Dev Play Games. If you like us, please rate us on your podcast service of choice. And we'll be back next week to talk about that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth uh, state of play, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then the Nintendo Direct that is surely happening the day after. <laughs> All right, folks. See you next week. Later, everyone. <laughs>